again brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Thing in the Cage. <laughs> The ancient, fabulous city of Cairo. Bertram Fordyce, a British businessman, and his attractive wife are hurrying through the narrow, dirty, cobblestone street. Come along, my dear. Come along. What on earth is the hearty, Bert? It's that feeling again, Lucy. That frightful feeling that someone's following us. It's no wonder in this DC city. Dark, narrow, little soaked and squalor everywhere. I mm, should be very glad to get back to London. America's where we're going, my dear. I can't shake off this illusion of being followed everywhere. It's just Cairo, Bert. You always had this feeling when we're here. It's worse this time, Lucy. Much worse. Bert, look. What is it? Give me so many. He's just an old beggar. Let's get behind me, though. Master! Master! Here you are, old boy. Here's some coins. I do not want your money, Master. Only one moment, your priceless time. Take the money and get out. Get out of our way. Hear me, Master. Have ageless wisdom for your ears. What do you want? A secret, Master. What secret? The secret of El Castab. How did you know about El Castab? Secret El Castab to him who asks, Master. Let us get by. Tell him, Tell him, Tell him, Secret of El Castab, or oh, by Allah, you will be struck down by death. Parking. Watch yourself going down the gangway, darling. Oh, it is a bit of relief, isn't it? After all we went through in Cairo. Now you can forget all those tears. Prophecy of the mad beggar. Yes, I, I'm sure this will be a very pleasant holiday. Here we are. Now, if we can find our luggage and get to the customs. We'll be just in time to have a drink before supper. I think this calls for a bit of celebration. A bottle of wine, perhaps. What's the matter, darling? Look up there. Where? Up there. That man standing by the rail, smiling down at us. Uh, he's the man, Lucy. He's the one who's been followed. But he couldn't have followed us all the way across the Atlantic. But he did, he did. But you can't be sure. I can. Look what he's carrying in his hand. He's always had it before, and he's got it with him now. Did you see it? Why, he's... He's carrying a cage. <laughs> That's the whole story, Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane. I know it sounds fantastic, but it's true. You say you've seen this, uh, this mysterious stranger three times since you saw him at the dark, Mr. Fordyce? And each time he's just standing there with that large cage in his hand, smiling. I can't stand it anymore, Mr. Cranston. I've simply got to have someone's help. You're convinced that he's the man to whom you're to reveal the secret of, uh, what was it? El Castab. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure he's the man. Well, Mr. Fordyce, you haven't yet told us just what the secret of El Castab is. I don't know, Miss Lane. 
That's the mysterious part of it. El Castrop is an old fortress on the edge of the African desert. You don't know of any secret in connection with this fortress? No, none. I see. Well, perhaps we'd better start at the beginning. You say that every time you've seen this man, it's been downtown, somewhere near the importing center? Right. Well, can you be more specific? Well, come to think of it, I guess it's always been on or near Market Street. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, Margo. We're going to Market Street? There are a couple of Egyptian importers who have shops on Market Street. One of them might be able to give us a lead to Mr. Fordyce's mysterious stranger. It's been almost two hours since we started pacing up and down Market Street. <laughs> I guess it was a pretty thin hunch. Looking for a mysterious stranger in an importing district. Especially when every other man looks like him. What is it? The other man, they look like a mysterious stranger, Margaret, but the man who just came around the corner fits Mr. Fordyce's description to a T. He does, doesn't he? Oh, dark. I'm on it, you. Look, he's carrying that awful cage. I can swallow. Bring bringing that shot across the street. What do we do? Get across the street here, quickly. Step close to the wall and approach the shot in the other direction. There's a sign hanging over the door. El Tamir, importer, New York and China. I'm now going to rush Mr. El Tamir and see who his friend is. Oh, oh I see. Not here much. Can I help you, please? Why, uh, we were just looking for someone. A friend? Not exactly. Uh, we were looking for a tall, dark gentleman who just walked into your shop. You must be mistaken, sir. No one has come in here for past half hour. But we just saw him come in. You must have seen him. He was carrying a large covered cage. Hey, kid. <laughs> there are many importer shops in the district. All very similar. We couldn't have been mistaken. Uh, perhaps we were this time, Oh, the mod. As long as we're here, I see you have some things for sale. The modest local business, in addition to my importing. Well, I'd like to buy some perfume. Uh, something light, I think, not too heavy and must. Yes. Yes, I have just the thing for Madame. No, it's uh, not for the young lady. Mm -hmm. No, I want it sent. You ship things out of this country, of course. It is such a small item. This should be very simple for you, Mr. Tamiya. I want this sent to a friend who lives just outside of Cairo. Outside Cairo. And the address? Address it simply Bertram Fordyce, El Kastab, Egypt. The matter, Mr. Tamiya. You broke an incense burner. My hand slipped. Or was it your tongue that slipped when you said you didn't see the man with a cage come into the shop? I did not. I swear it. I did not. Why does the word El Castab frighten you? What do you know about that place? Nothing. Nothing. I said, what do you know about El Castab? I... All I know is that there was once great treasure hidden in the fortress there. Great treasure? When was it hidden there? During the war, just before Marshal Rommel swept across the desert, it was hidden there so Germans would not... Where is this treasure now? I do not know. I have heard nothing about it since I left Cairo five, six years ago. I see. Well, Mr. Tamir, we'll be going now, but I don't think this will be our last visit. You are always welcome, sir. And the next time, perhaps we will both know more about the secret of El Castal. <laughs> Sit down, Bert, please, and try to get hold of yourself. Oh, why doesn't he call? Why doesn't he let me know something? Well, I'm sure Mr. Cranston is doing everything he can. Everything, everything. He's wandering around looking for Egyptian importers while I sit here and wait for that smiling gentleman with a cage. Bert, you've told me a hundred times that there's no secret of El Castell. If you've nothing to hide, you've nothing to fear. No. No, I suppose not. You've never told me the reason for all these trips to Egypt. Business, business, Lucy. I've told you that before. But we have had rather sudden bursts of wealth over the past few years. Was there money hidden at El Castell? Money? No, no, no money. Lucy, believe me, there's nothing I can tell you. This is something different. Something I can't escape. I feel as if the very shadow of death were creeping up. What was that? The... 
someone knocking at the door. Were you expecting anyone? Not that I know of, but... Lucy. Don't go, Bert. Lucy. Don't go. I have to, Lucy. I have to see who it is. Good evening. Mr. Thorndyke. It is you. Yes. It is I. Go away. Go away. Aren't you ready? Ready? To tell me your secret, Mr. Fordyce. The secret of El Castab. Lucky you saw it before Mr. Fordyce after you left the shop. Yes, you sound a bit worried. Frightened. You said that man with the cage was there at the house? What you said, Margot. Here we are. Oh, I'm so glad you both come. I'm almost out of my mind. It's with a problem, Mr. That man, he's back there in the study with Bert. Come on, Margot. They've been arguing violently. It's been getting worse and worse. You're trying to stop him. I can't get in the study. No one. Bert had a double lock put on the door just to be safe. Um, Come on, listen. No, no, please. Got to get in there fast. Up these stairs. Here, quickly. They lead to the roof. There's a studio skylight. We can get in that way. We're not too late. This door leads right onto the roof. There. No, no. Listen. Get it off me. I can't see through the glass. He's fighting with something. There's nothing around his throat. Skylight's stuck. You'll have to break the glass. Something strangling. Stand back. There. Oh, Lord, look down there. Good Lord. He's lying there on the floor. His neck. Who is this? Just... There's nothing in the room. Nothing. We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. Now, back to the shadow. Margot and Lamont, in an effort to learn the secret of El Castab, have trailed the mysterious man with a cage to the home of Bertram Fordyce, but arrive there only in time to crash through the skylight and find him dead. It is a short time later now, as Margot returns from quieting Mrs. Fordyce. Lamont, she's all right now. She's in the room. Any leads? The mysterious gentleman with the cage apparently escaped through the window here and fled down the alley. Did you hear what Fordyce was shouting just before you broke to the skylight? He said, get it off. Get it off. Yes, yes. It seems the cage must be an animal of some kind. Animal trained to kill, obviously. Strangle the life out of a man on command. A monkey, chimpanzee, an ape. Perhaps. What? Might even be some kind of a bird. Yes. Yes. Marks on Fordyce's throat could have been made by claws. Both Egypt and Africa produce wild, vicious birds that can be highly trained. And again, it, it might be... Might be what? The marks on his throat might have been made by sharp scales. Scales? Oh, Mark, not a snake. Oh, Lord knows what terrible thing is in that cage. I do know, though, we've got to stop this thing, whatever it is, from doing any more killing. What can we do, Lamont? An important friend, Tamir, knows Egypt, Margot. I think he also knows a great deal more about that mysterious stranger than he admitted to us. You're going to see Tommy again? Yes, Martha. This time, as the shadow. Good evening, Tommy. Monsieur Constantine, you should not have come here to my shop. There have been people here asking about you. We will talk in your back room, Tamiya. Yes. This way, quickly. To the sliding door. There. Now we are at least out of sight. Why have you come, Monsieur Constantine? Or die. He is dead. You killed him? Subati. 
is the same. Then you have the nut? No, Mr. Fordyce said he did not have it. He did not believe him. I let Subar the case to arrange the truth for him. Still, he would not confess. His last gasping breath was that the map was no longer in his possession. Not in his possession? Then where could it be? Mm. That is exactly what I would like to know, Sammy. You don't think that yes, I... Yes, Sammy, I do. I also think that you are going to give me the map before I leave the shop. But I do not have the map. I swear I have it. I want that map, Samir. I have traveled across two continents to get the treasure of El Castab, and I intend to have it. But I do not know where it is. Give me that map. Please, Monsieur Constantine, please. Give me that map. Please, please do not hit me again. I do not have the map. I swear it. Very well. Get up. Get up! You believe me? Perhaps. I took some papers from Fordyce's body. Perhaps the map was among them. Yes, of course. The map must be among his papers. I'm here. Yes, Monsieur Constantine. I'm going to return to my room now and look through those papers. And if I do not find the map there, I shall return. But... And if I do, I'm here. I shall open this cage. And you will meet Suba. The quiet, deadly Suba. Face to face. <laughs> Yes, what can I do for... The front door opens, no one comes in. I saw the door open. There is no one here. There is someone here, Tommy, yeah? <laughs> but voice. Who's walking? Customer is coming to your shop, Tommy. Who are you? This is the shadow. <laughs> what do you want? Information, Tommy. Who killed Bertram Fordyce? Well, come here. Hi. Monsieur Constantine. And who is Monsieur Constantine? A foreign gentleman who is searching for treasure of El Castab. He carries large covered cage with him. The thing in cage killed Fortis. What is this thing in the cage? I do not know. I have never seen it. It kills. That is all I know. But you do know a great deal about the treasure of El Castab, don't you, Tommy? No. I do not even know where treasure is hidden. Treasure is not hidden in the desert fortress? It was. But what I move it across the desert. It was hidden again and again. And now? Now it is buried somewhere in Holy Land. Holy Land? Yes. That is why it must be found quickly. Every day the Holy Land blazes with more fire and revolt. I see. Where is this Constantine now? He went back to his rooms. There were some papers he took from Fordyce. He is looking for map among them. Where are his rooms? The Hotel Metropole. Very well, Tommy. Thank you for the information. You serve your customers very well. <laughs> <laughs> To the time. Don't come back here after what you did to my husband. It's not the visit of my choice. I shall call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Get out of my way. Time is of the essence, Mrs. Fordyce. I will be brief. I want the map of El The map? It's not among the papers I have in my room. Papers I procured from your husband's body. I can only conclude it's hidden somewhere in this house. I will have it be immediately. You'll have it. I'll see that... The map, Mrs. Fordyce, the map. I... All right. Follow me. Here, in the study. The Fordyce has a secret drawer in his desk. Quickly, Mrs. Fordyce. It's, uh, it's here somewhere. 
Oh, yes. This is what I was looking for. <laughs> I should have expected something like this. You may put the revolver back in the drawer. I think not, Mr. Constantine. I very much think I shall leave it. You see, when Bert said that the mask was not in his possession, he was telling the truth. I had the mask. I take it your husband's death was more of a convenience than a tragedy, Mr. Fortnite. Precisely as your death will be a convenience, Mr. Constantine. Neither. I hardly believe the American police will be too curious about your sudden demise. It's all very easy. It is not. It took some planning and a bit of acting. So simple you might almost say it was a snap. Yes, Mrs. Ford, I should snap. <laughs> My throat. Sure, about Mrs. Ford, I, I left the cage open, but just was an emergency. Suba, respond instantly to my command. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Get it. Thank you by the alley, Margot. Come in, I see us in front of the shop. Did the shadow talk to Tammy in the morning? Just left it. And? I have to work fast, darling. Mr. Constantine's probably in this room at the Hotel Metropole now, looking for the map of the treasure they'll just stop. And you're going there to find him? Shadow is. What do you want me to do? Constantine knows that Tom here doesn't have the map. They just left the shop. Yes. Yeah. So if by some chance the map isn't at his hotel, he'll be back to see Mrs. Fordyce. So you want me to warn him? Yes. Have a meet you at police headquarters. I'll take care of it. While you are, the shadow will be taking care of our elusive friend with the cage. <laughs> Mrs. Fordyce was resting and relaxed. Must be so asleep. I've got to warn her. Maybe if I knock. Throw it up. Mrs. Fordyce. Mrs. Fordyce. I hope something happened. Mrs. Fordyce. Good evening, young lady. Oh, it's you. They are closed. The cage. And you, my dear, are familiar to me. Weren't you with the inquisitive young man who crashed through the skylight? You'll never get away with that. I see. But I don't believe I can say as much for you. You have no reason to kill me. You think I am stupid enough to let a witness to two of Suba's crimes go unattended? I'll, I'll scream. I'll make someone hear Only a very short scream, my dear. Suba is very quick. Suba? Yes. Some believe Suba to be a kind of bird. Some believe a reptile which lies coiled behind those bars, ready to strike. Others swear that I carry with me a small, fierce ape. Suba is none of those things. Don't open that cage. It's none of those things. As you will see for yourself when I open the cage like this. Oh, no. No. Yes. It's a human being. Yes, my dear. A human being like you or I. Only much smaller. And a great deal stronger. Get it away. Suba is a native of the Niger region of Central Africa. But pygmies grow very small and very fierce. Get away. You don't like Suba. He's not very attractive. But he's quite intelligent. He speaks a few words. Suba, speak. Speak. Heal. 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 Not a large vocabulary, but adequate for our purposes. Heal. Heal. Now, Suba, to work quickly. We wasted much time. Ew! 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 Ew!
Fuck you. Kill. 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 But I hear the voice. Kill. Kill. Get away from me. Get away. <laughs> now, Constantine, you know for a fleeting instant the terror of the unknown. The terror you've struck in the hearts of your victims. Tell me, please. Whoever you are. You carry the cage of death, Constantine. Now I will find yourself caged. No. No. And you'll remain caged, Monsieur Constantine, until time for your execution. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime. There's bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Ha, 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 ha,